Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zim... I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're pleased to announce the launch of ZimCat03. This is the second or third bubbling, I guess, on it. We did a bubbling on memory management. Uh, cool. And we did a bubbling on what's new in the site. Yay. So check those out. Those were previous bubblings. In this bubbling, we're going to do, well, just general updates here and there. And then we've got a few feature updates that we'll do in the following bubblings. Let's go to the site at zimjs.com and we'll go into the docs here. Boop, boop. And then take a look at updates. Bing. So to, to take you through some of the updates that aren't the main feature updates, uh, we're coming to the updates page, zimjs.com slash updates.html. And we're going to take a look at style first. So here's how we traditionally would style a circle, any circle. So all circles that are made from now on, we would put them in the type uh, in the type object here. So we would say style in the squiggly brackets, type, circle, button, etc. Um, we always realized that that added one level of abstraction, so to speak, or organization. We had to uh, store them into a type. And the uh, alternative to type was group. So there's also group, which is like a class where you could specify groups of tags or <laughs> tags, groups of objects would have these certain styles. And then you could also put styles directly in the style. And when you put styles directly in the style, it would be applied to all objects, not, not just a circle, for instance. So we had those three areas, the area uh, inside of style directly, the styles inside of type, and the styles inside of group. Well, uh, what we've decided is if, since we're starting with a capital letter for all of our objects, we've made uh, what we call now, I think, what do we call it? We call it a, a lazy style or a lazy object. <laughs> okay, was. So we don't have to put the type anymore. We can put the style or the, the object directly out in the style. And if it has a capital letter, we assume that it's going to be a type. As a matter of fact, we pre-parse it. So we pull it out from here and we stick it into the, the type and then we just carry on like normal. So it was one, just a little shift right in the front of pre-parsing, just a little shift. We check to see if it has a capital letter. If it does, we throw it into the type. And we were able to make maybe, maybe sort of more generic style setting right here where we could put the circle out. So that makes it about as easy, I think, as a CSS, for instance. We don't have to put one more, uh, one more level in there. Yay! So try that out with style. There you go. And it's explained here as well. So here's an example where we've got a style. We've got the button right out in the style. And then there's a width. So all objects that get made will have a width of 100, except buttons will have a width of 200. So the, the class names override the, the general styles still, regardless of the order. Uh, what is this example? So also applying styles with just add now instead of add type with a label, which is still, you can still do this, add type label and have font courier. You can now just add a label with a font courier. So you can see that's a little bit shorter. Uh, we've sidestepped that one extra type um, property that we're storing it in. Good. We're going to do a full out bubbling on effects, so we'll ignore this for now. Ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. Arrow. Arrow is neat and it works along with pages. So if I click on the survey here, these guys are arrows down at the bottom. And note we've grayed the arrow out. This is the beginning of the survey. We can't go that way. We can either gray it out or we can make it disappear completely. There's also different types of arrows that are available. There's the traditional Zim triangle that we, that we thought we'd go with. I always like the triangle. But uh, here we thought we'd feature a, a different arrow. There's also skinny arrows and little brackets and, and that kind of stuff. So these arrows work in conjunction. Well, they work on their own, but they also work in conjunction with Zim pages to be able to automatically, if you if you add arrows here, it will figure out that uh, it will run the pages in the order that you provided the pages. Much like Swipe now also automatically runs the pages in the swipe order. That can be overridden and you can do different types of orders, but the arrows by default will, uh, will cycle you through. Isn't that nice? So now... Um, uh, take a look at the code of this page, right? F12 and, uh, oh, no, 
not F12, Control U, Control U, and you can see those there. Eh, why don't we do it? Control U, and we'll see those arrows in play. And Control F arrow, and let's see what we got. So there it is. Next is a new arrow. We're making it blue. We're making the light in color. We're linking it to pages. So here's our uh, const pages up here. Page one, page two, page three, page three, etc. Um, we're doing a transition of a zim uh, line. Uh, the zim lines gives zim colors to a line transition with uh, speed. That's the speed. And there might be something more there, null and die. Okay, so there's our pages. All the pages go in there. They'll automatically uh, swipe to one another now. And then here's our, our arrows, two arrows that are um, saying when we go right. Oh, that's the arrow type is thick. We've scaled it and positioned it. And that's it. That's our pages management right there. What's this one doing? It's, oh, we had a case where we don't want to swipe to the results page. So we don't want to allow people to go to the results page um, before they submit it. So this was just a little saying, turn off the swipe of that. But isn't that great? Pages, there's our pages. Arrows, work with these pages. Super. I think uh, you can't get much easier than that. Back in the updates, slider and tick la labels. I'll show you those in a bubbling, a specific bubbling, and that relates to the layout. So we have a layout bubbling coming up, and in, in that layout, there's a few of the new features are actually visually shown there, so we'll talk about those at that point. A survey. If you haven't done the survey, zimjs.com slash survey will get you there, so you don't need this special stuff on the end, but zimjs.com slash survey. We'd love to have you take the survey. Actually, that's what we just showed you, uh, the survey there, but it is a real survey. It's a demonstration of how Zim works, yay, but it's also a uh, real survey that we would like you to take. That'd be great. In the last bubbling, we showed you improvements to the docs and the updates, which is what we're looking through now. And the site map as well was uh, was there, I think. Yeah, we were taking it through the site. We did a Zim Zoom. That was exciting. I forgot to show you that. So here's a Zim Zoom page. And we've already started this meeting. So probably what we should do is um, uh, archive this and get ready for the next Zim Zoom. Maybe come up with a theme. That's what we'll be doing. And in Zim Slack, we have, and Discord, I think we posted the video or a link to the video of our last Zim Zoom, which was launching of, of Cat 3. So come on in and check that out. Zimjs.com slash Zoom. We haven't actually found a place on the site for that. Although Zoom at the moment is sort of more for our. Um, are the people in our community. So that's where we're telling people about it is in Slack and in Discord to come on in and do the Zoom. Speaking of Discord, we've launched a, a new Discord. So maybe maybe I could show you just uh, what that looks like briefly with a desktop reveal. Desktop reveal, woohoo. And here's our Discord. And popping on over here. So here are some examples that are up on the Discord. There's a tutorial when you come in, welcome messages where people are joining Discord. We've got this Zertle guy <laughs> and bots, and you can talk in here so that you can talk and share uh, share things. So come on in and, uh, and hang out with us. We'd love to see you here. As you progress through your Discord, we give you different settings. Here's a Xenius. <laughs> Zenius. We've got the, uh, the ad minions. Um, they're kind of fun. Uh, minions and Zoggers and Zimbies. So when you arrive, you'll be a Zimby. But uh, if we know you do some Zim work, then you'll progress through the different levels and stuff like that. And we'd love to, to have you come in here and do some talking, especially if you're on, on Discord. Sound good? Come on in. Ah, oh, desktop reveal. Okay. Mobile. Oh, right. We added a mobile section as well. I should have shown you this when we looked through the site. How do we get there? Under code, popping all over the place. Under code, uh, uh, down below here, there's Distill Assets and Wonders and Zaps and PWA. So right here, uh, make mobile apps with PWAs or with Capacitor. So if you click either of these in here, you run into a section that 
talks about Zim on mobile, all the features that we have that are ready for mobile. Here's an example of a PWA, a progressive web app, it's called. And we're, uh, it's called, this one's called Groovity. A lot of main companies are making progressive web apps now. They're good for information apps. They're taking web apps and uh, presenting them as mobile apps. Uh, which means that they get on the user's uh, desktop or on the you know the mobile device uh, home screen, and uh, you, when you press it, it opens up in a full window without any browser or anything like that. So it looks just like an app, and we have access to the things that the apps apps have as well, like uh, Tilt and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can read more information about it here. This goes off to Google's information on progressive web apps. We've also got trusted web activities, which will take uh, PWAs and launch them in the store of, of Android. Uh, progressive web apps, too, can, can be put into the stores on Apple, um, but probably wrapped in something like Capacitor here. So Capacitor does what PhoneGap Build does. It's part of the Ionic system. Uh, unfortunately, Adobe PhoneGap and PhoneGap Build is closed now, or they, they've stopped uh, they've stopped supporting it because of progressive web apps primarily. Uh, but you can come out here to Capacitor and wrap up your web apps in uh, in uh, native app uh, app views and stuff like that, or browser views, or whatever they call them there. So you're welcome to read about that. It was a 70 step process to get through that system. This is more like a three-step process, progressive web apps. So uh, there's information on a manifest server workers and how you can prepare that uh, to ensure quality using Lighthouse to make sure that you're all ready for progressive web apps. And so that's a little mini site on all of that stuff there. There is an example, this one right here, PWA basic example, which shows uh, this uh, this example right here, getting you set up for progressive web apps. So view the source there. It's a, a, a file or two, a manifest, uh, some JavaScript that you have to add. Um, and that's primarily what you're dealing with there. There is also a setup, a way that you can prompt the user to save it onto their home screen. And that is not in this example, but it is, we, we do that in the Groovity example. So let's take a look at how that was done in Groovity to get a prompting to have the user add it to their Apple homepage, for instance, or their, their, everybody's still solidifying on how that system works. We're really hoping that it gets a little easier, but I mean, it's not that hard. It's just a bit inconsistent at the moment. All right, so that's the Zim mobile area where we already took you through the memory and improvements there and examples of how you can do your memory that was in a previous bubbling. But there's the summary of all of that is here in the updates. So you're welcome to look through the summary of all that memory management. Display base. We've got, when we did all that memory management, we added a display base function for the common properties um, that are in container, shape, bitmap, sprite, movie clip. Oh, this is something that I, I was thinking, the general dispose. Up, up here, I might mention the general dispose that we added. Uh, but anyway, that's another matter. Okay, display base, we found that we had certain things in common. Ah, this this was all related to when we added the um, the effects. So we added a bunch of effects as well that are in, included on all display objects. Because we extend create.js, create.js has a display object um, abstract class that every that containers will extend from sprites will extend from movie clips etc well we don't have access to that class directly so we were starting to repeat some of our code on each of these four major display five major display types container shape bitmap sprite movie clip so instead of doing that now we've taken all that stuff that we were doing in common and and abstracted that out into our own display base and added it to these things. So that just um, makes Zim a little bit uh, less for downloading. Yay! Uh, okay, some general improvements. We'll talk about the corner and the radius in an upcoming bubbling when we look at the layout. We'll talk about layout. Uh, let's see. 
is there anything in here? I'll zoom in a bit on this that we might want to talk about. How did set timeout checks to tags? Okay, don't worry about it. Copying events, duplicate, supposed to override hotspots, um, a typo and running master filter style bug swipers. So some bug fixes and uh, I think there's a couple things in here. Clone, snope, start, head length, style with pose. Now it looks like just main, main fixes and then some more patches as well. So have a read through those. There are some improvements and, and various updates. We fixed a, a small glitch in the way that um, uh, hit test grid worked. So hit test grid, you can read about it here, but anyway, that's what we just did yesterday. <laughs> I think so fresh on our mind, but that was causing a small bug in the scrambler when we scrambled things that had spacings in them. So if, if it didn't have spacings, it was no problem. It was the way that we were handling spacings in the hit test grid was just slightly off. So that's been fixed up. Yay. Uh, Zim base, we added an improvement to Zim base as well to simplify some things. So if you're collecting data, um, we've got a simplify command now via base that simplifies our coupled coupled data. So previously we were receiving coupled data like circle underscore x, circle underscore y, count underscore current value. Well now we've um, done a simplification so that that is uh, handled more easily. It just becomes uh, X, Y, and count sort of thing. If, if we so desire, it gets rid of what it was stored on. Most of the time, we don't necessarily need that. Some of the time we do, but often we don't. And so if we don't need it, then you can simplify it, basically. That allows us to put it into, into the database more easily. So have a read here if you're interested in the simplification that we made in ZimBase. That's our PHP uh, helper library framework, or helper, I guess, library to um, handle MySQL I getting data into the database. Take a look on the survey at our data. It's amazing. It's like, wow, it's like two lines of code or something like that. We're getting data into our database. And then it's so easy with bind to get data from that survey. So I think we did an explore on that, if I can remember correctly. So have a look there, or just look at the example, like look at the code in behind the survey. It's all commented there, and there's actually not much to comment because, like I said, it's only a couple lines. So we do show the PHP in the HTML code so that you can see what that's like. Don't know if we talked about a report, but just to click, we can quickly click and take a look. This is the growth uh, between 2019 and 2020. In the Zim uh, library itself, how many times we've used ons, times outs, intervals, vars, etc. And uh, you can sort of proportionally see the growth that we're still growing over 2019, proportionally this much versus this much of the whole library. This is represents the whole library in the gray. Well, actually, now the whole library goes right to the end. But um, in the last two, in the last two years, we've basically doubled the library in size. We have been growing pretty well consistency, consistently. And uh, still, uh, I thought we would stop growing. <laughs> it's like, when are we going to stop? Uh, 10, we just burst through 10. We hit cat and we launched four versions of cat now, all with pretty serious stuff in them. So uh, maybe now we'll stop growing. But that's growth in the library itself and also in community. And as as you're looking here, just sort of check out the, the data visualization that we're doing. This is custom data visualization in Zim. We still have not added a library of things like charts and graphs. And if we were to do that, most likely we would put that, I suspect, in a helper library, much like pizzazz and physics and, and uh, three 3D sockets. So so that we can build on that without you know building the main size of Zim too much. We always do have competition with D3, which just has tons of different ways to show charts and data visualization. So I mean whatever. Uh, it, it's Zim is great for making custom things like this. It's quite easy to, to make this. These were all done in a, both of these things were done in a night. Uh, data and um, the presentation. So it could be fairly quick to make these types of things in Zim, but it might be nice to have some, some actual class support for those, maybe one day. So that's a, a potential area for improvement. 
Okay, and we've taken you through the site, some of the site updates. There's a little list of them, and we saw that in the last bubbling. And that's up to date on some of the odds and ends, we'll call it. But I really like this first one that we showed you with the style that makes using style in Zim, I think, as easy as CSS. There's a lot of there's a lot of even better things in Zim than in CSS. Things like using the Zim V values with their styles that is amazing. Um, but in terms of simplicity of typing the style, it was a little more complicated with our extra nesting. Now we've re reduced that requirement, and uh, I think that's looking good. That should be handy for you. All right, this is Dr. Abstract, and it's been a what's bubbling in Zim with some odds and ends in there that may help you out. We're going to come back with a couple of our main features in the bubblings. All right, so check those out. Cheers. <laughs>